One small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. Here is the mini for today. And our miniature for today is this Friar Stone from Reaper Miniatures. And uh, I know I put a whole di bunch of different paints listed. But basically what we're talking about here is brown. We're going to give them nice tan skin tone. And then we're going to use brown, brown, brown to make a wood colored keg and a wood colored book and a wood colored weapon and wood, you know, a brown colored leather uh, clothing and a, it's just going to be leather 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 and more leather maybe some more leather so yeah brown color of the day so just to remind you here's the the schedule we've been working off so there we are it's been uh, what are we on now 10 weeks 10 weeks in a row we've basically we've done this we skipped one week firestone is the last one and then we'll put out a new schedule uh soon so everybody can start getting the minis organized for February. And then there's our list of paints for today. Uh, the skew there, 3205, is for the uh, metal version. I'm actually painting the Bones one today. And I'm just looking for a tan skin tone. Plus, you know, my usual favorite colors will be thrown into the mix as we go. And then we are back to... Uh, oops, that's not what we want to see. We want to see the project. There it is. So now we can get a good look at him. And we can start painting away on this guy. As usual, as you're painting along, if you have questions, don't hesitate to ask. Love hearing your questions. And uh, if you're on Twitch, uh, just know that I'll try to catch your uh, your chats as we go, but uh, you're much better off to follow us on uh, on Discord. On the Discord, I'll be able to see your questions right away, and then uh, um, you'll also be able to get feedback off of off of Twitch as well. Sorry, off of the Discord as well. So now we can get on with this. All right, so for the skin tone, I am going to give him a kind of a leathery, aged-looking skin. So I'm going to use this um, Reaper tan skin as my base skin tone. I'm going to use burgundy wine, one of my favorite colors there. If I assume I'll be able to find it. It's on here somewhere on my desk. My desk is a huge mask at the moment due to a painting blitz, basically, that we did this week. So burgundy wine is going to be here somewhere. Hopefully it won't take me more than an hour to find it. Burgundy wine. Looks like purple. All right, so for now, I'm going to add, I'm going to use Golden Blonde as my highlight color. Maybe we'll use a bit of Creamy Ivory as well to kind of uh, do the highest highlights. You can have dark brown eyes. So I'm going to need some, we're going to use lots of brown today. So we'll use Russet Brown. Russet Brown is going to be for lots of leather, but we're also going to use that for his eyes. And burgundy wine is going to show up now because I've, there it is, hidden right in front of me on the desk. There's our burgundy wine. And that's enough for the skin tone. For the main overall leather robe, we're going to use that leather color. So that's going to be um, russet brown and then some harvest brown. An orange brown. These colors are quite good for doing leather because they they layer really well. It seems like the pigment that's in these 
lighter browns are um, they they glaze well, so or not glaze but layer well. So they can be quite thin and they'll easy to work with, and they uh, I, th I think they look quite good. We're going to need some other colors to mix to do a variety of different um, leathery and whatever kind of colors. So we're going to use some snow shadow and we're going to need some stone gray. We'll use this probably for his hair as well as for a few other things. And then I'm just going to have to play it by ear as we go forward. I'm going to use green ochre as the main color for the wood. Okay, that'll work. And let's throw some dragon black on there to play with. There's our dragon black. I'm going to add a little bit of some white. So let's use our solid white. Okay, solid white, don't hide from me. You would think it would be easy to see you being right in front of me on the table. That's not how this goes. Oh, it's at the airbrush, that's why. There's our solid white. We'll put that up by the skin tone in the corner. And then we're going to need... I'm going to... Actually, I shouldn't have shaken that. I'm going to use a bit of flow improver. I think I'll save the flow improver until I'm ready for it later. Uh, but that's the plan for now. Okay. And away we go. Okay. So uh, for the skin tone, I'm going to start with my base coat. is going to be a fairly dark skin tone. I'm going to use the... I'm going to use the burgundy wine uh, to darken the tan skin tone. Give me a very purpley, sort of dark skin tone. And that's what I'm going to start with. That'll be my base coat. And I'm going to probably do a burgundy wine uh, shade on this as well. But for now, this is going to be our starting skin tone. And I'm going to highlight up from this. As we go. And in this case, uh, today, my light is going to be coming from high right. So we're going to have a nice big highlight on top of that pot belly. So I'm going to put an arrow on the base right away. So I remember what direction I intended as my light source. Let's slide down just to this. There we go. And now let's just start doing the base on the skin tone. So I'm going to start on this arm. So we have to remember as we go through this that one of his feet is bare and one of them has a shoe. And we need to paint his arms, his hands, his foot, and, of course, uh, his face and his head. Those are the main areas that we need to paint. Now, I'm not going to be super concerned with being particularly neat on this guy today. Because Friar Stone here, to me, looks like he's been bashing around in the backwoods and the dungeon and the seedier alleys of the city. He's Maybe he's going where he needs to go to find the people who need his help. But I have a suspicion that this Firestone fella uh, might actually be one of the people who needs some assistance. So he's going to get painted up like he's worse for wear. In fact, I can see already that somehow this sculpt is missing part of his forearm. Probably means that I cut it off by mistake, but it's all good. So again, I'm not particularly worried about brush direction, but what I am just being careful to do is make sure I give this, put this color on everything that's going to be skin tone so that uh, as we build up the colors, build up the highlights towards the light source, we don't suddenly discover that we missed a piece, which is what I usually do. And then uh, have to kind of backtrack and 
do some extra highlighting and whatever as we go. Now this particular bones figure, I tried to get rid of all the mold lines, but it's got a lot of mold lines. Um, you know, some casts are better than others. And I had a really nice one set aside for this video, but I think it got given to somebody. So the one I'm working with today is one that I just prepped at the last minute this morning because I couldn't, I can't find the one that I had already prepared. So this guy's a little bit rougher than I would have preferred, but he's still coming along. I think being rough around the edges is entirely appropriate for Friarstone here. He's, uh, with that grin he's got on his face, I suspect he might be like a retired barbarian brawler or something like that. He was just pretending to be a, a cleric. Or maybe he's a monk who for decades and decades and decades worked in the brewery at the abbey. And so he's uh, kind of a fried friar. <laughs> Sorry. So we're going to paint his foot as well with the skin tone. Make sure we get that foot. A little bit of the foot sticking under the robe there, now highlighted. Let's do one double check, make sure we didn't make anything. Oh, we missed part of his mouth, part of his lip. Top of his, look at that, we missed a lot at the top of his beard. That's because I'm holding the miniature on an angle for the camera, but it means that I often cannot see the top of the mini very well. There we go. Top of his arm in there. All good. All good. Okay, so we're gonna let that dry for a little while. And while we're waiting for that to dry, we're gonna put a base coat of this russet brown for all the leather. So we're just gonna start doing the russet brown and uh, basically um, all of his robe under here and under there, I think it's gonna be this color. Or we could give him a lighter colored robe, like it's stitched together pieces of cloth, and we'll do everything else as brown leather. I think that's what we're going to do. We're going to paint everything else leather, but we're going to leave his shirt, and we'll make it like a dirty, stained looking sort of a cleric's um, garment. So all these belts, this thing over his shoulder, all that stuff is going to be treated as leather. And we're going to treat his robe there as cloth. I don't know what color it's going to be yet. We'll have to figure that out. I guess we could give him like a black monk's um, kind of robe or a habit, whatever they call it. Or we could do like a, a one that's of a particular color. Like he's, uh, like it's cloth of some kind. I don't know. I have to think about that. What would go red? What would go well with his brown? That's the question I'm wondering. I don't really have a plan for that. My plan is pretty much just to paint this cool guy brown. Brown, brown, more brown, and more brown. So maybe that's what we'll do. We'll give him, that's what we'll do. We'll give him an off white robe which is a warm white off-white robe and then uh, we'll practice painting a warm white color but everything else is going to be leather so this whole belt pouch is going to be leather the thing that's wrapping this foot is going to be like a little leather a poor quality leather shoe and then we'll give his robes like a really, really dirty look around the bottom. There we go. That's what we want. This is like a book case or something. So this is going to be brown as well. And we'll pick out the, we'll pick the books out of that later. There we go. Ooh, 
Right. So I'm just going to keep base coating all the stuff that's going to be this leathery brown color. Make sure we get all the belts. This kind of travel hood that he's got there. And make sure we get a nice base coat on that. Don't miss any spots. I mean, it doesn't really matter if we miss a couple of spots. We're going to put a lot of different colored layers on there. And that's one of the ways to make leather look leathery, is to have it look a little bit shiny, a lot of texture, variety, very organic looking. Uh, I mean, it's a natural material to start with, but then as it gets beat up and abused, as it uh, uh, gets used, it cracks and it scratches and it... Um, when it gets wet, it gets stained. So that's what we're doing. We're going to make a very mucky, stained looking leather overhood. And I'm pretty sure anybody who's walking around basically wearing a beer barrel on his back to drink from, it's probably going to look pretty stained. Not necessarily because he's drinking it all the time, but he's certainly going to trip and fall over a heck of a lot carrying that barrel on his back. I don't know, maybe it's a barrel of holy water. Although, I suspect not. You might tell people it's a barrel of holy water, but I'm guessing it's a cask of beer or something. Alright. Love this russet brown as a good starter color for the leather. Keep it going. There we go. Now, have we got all the leather done is the question. Looking pretty good. Done over the shoulder. We've got a lot of these little spots done. Got the little carrying case is done. We did his shoe. I think this is a flask so we're not going to paint that brown. We'll just leave that. Um, maybe that's a vial of holy water. We'll paint that maybe as a, I'll maybe leave that up to the people who decide what they want to do with that when they paint the details. It can be glass bottle, it can be a metal flask, it can be whatever they want. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to do is paint all the wood and all the rope, and that's what this green ochre that we put on the pallet is going to be for. Um, this is going to be kind of a warm, natural, kind of organic looking color underneath all the rope and the wood and that sort of stuff, and uh, should look all right. So I'm going to start by putting this on the pages of the books that are just visible through the side of that case. And do the same thing on the back. The books are just visible in there. Paint this on there. But then with that done, now I'm looking for ropes. So we'll start in the front. There's a rope that you can see just up underneath his arm. Okay, and then that one goes along his belly. I'm gonna paint all of that rope this color. What else could you use? You could use the leather brown, you could use, um, you could just kind of mix your own light brown color. Rope can be a lot of different colors. In this case, I'm making kind of an assumption that it's a piece of like hemp rope. Now, the one that goes over his shoulder, we'd look for that, it goes under his forearm and underneath his hand. And we'll turn him around and we can see that it goes from the top of his hand back. Over his shoulder, very close to his beard. Remember I said when we started, we're gonna make lots of mistakes because this is gonna be pretty, he's gonna be messy, so the painting can be a little bit messy too. So it's okay if you get a little bit of a stain on different uh, 
different areas. When we go to paint the leather, that's just going to enhance the overall look. Now we've got the bands around the barrel are going to be metal. The wood is going to be wood and there's rope there. So basically we can just paint all of that barrel, all of its ropes, the bands of metal, all that stuff can be painted this green ochre color. And when we go to paint the metal at the end, we'll just cover it over. And if it does show through the metal, well, it just means it's like reflecting the area, the, uh, the environment around it. Now, one of the things we're going to do today, we are going to do a wash over this black. And we're not going to use like a special product for that. We're just going to use um, wash over the wood and wash over the, um, the leather. We're going to do a black wash on all that. And what that's going to do is any of these little tiny spots that are hard to kind of get the paint to go down in, we're going to um, let black paint flow down into those, fill them in for us. That will take a little bit of time to dry, so that's why we're going to do all of our base coats that I intend the black to go over first. And then we're going to go back to working on his robe and his skin tone, because they are not going to be uh, glazed, sorry, not going to have a black wash over them. So the next thing we're going to do is this wooden weapon of his with all its metal studs and all that. This is all going to be painted that same green ochre base coat. So we'll paint the handle. Every time I look at this guy, I think that he's got like a butter churning device in his hand. And then I realize, no, 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 he's out clubbing. Pun intended. So he's taking his beer keg, keg to the clubs and he's taking his club to the clubs. Sorry, I know that's not funny, but uh, it's Sunday, so I'm allowed to make dad jokes on Sundays. I've been told. I've even been told they don't even have to be good. I'm allowed to make dad jokes on Sundays. Okay, let's keep going. Keep going with this green ochre. paint in. Okay, now we need to, need to give this a minute to dry before we start slapping uh, a black wash over it. But in the meantime, we will do a base coat on the cloth. And for the cloth, I'm going to use leather brown as my first layer of color for the cloth robes. Now, it's leather brown hiding from me on here somewhere. There it is right in front of me. Okay, leather brown. Leather brown is a great color from Reaper. I use it for doing light colored cloth all the time. When you say it's leather brown, why is he using it for light colored cloth? I think it just gives a nice, um, gritty, warm undertone to, uh, to light cloth colors when you use it as your base coat. So or as a shadow color. I'm going to use it as the base coat in this case. So for most things we're doing today, we're going to start with a dark, dark color and we're going to build up different colors and lighter colors on top to create our highlights. As usual, I am not thinning with water. I'm just smoothing out the paint with the brush on the palette, loading up the brush by rolling it in the paint, keeping it basically a nice point on there. And then we're going to just keep going. All right, so I'm going to paint all of his robe this color. I'm going to call it a robe hopefully from now on I'll remember. And then uh, yes, this is the plan. Under the arm. Now I did say we don't have to be super careful and we don't. I mean mistakes are not going to be a problem at this stage but uh, might be messy if we don't have to. I am not going to be worried about doing a second coat of this color, even if it's patchy, because by the time I'm done adding all the different highlights and all the glazing we're going to do on it, um, those imperfections, like this dark brown, which is showing through it right here, all of those are just going to look like various stains and things that I want it to have there on his, uh, on his clothing. Not to mention we're about to put a black 
wash over all of this. You know what, maybe I won't use black. Maybe I'll use a very dark brown. I haven't used my favorite brown in a while, walnut brown, which is so dark it's almost black. Maybe we'll do a wash of walnut brown. Of course, I won't remember to add that to the list of paints for the day, but that's what we're going to do is we're going to use walnut brown. You can make something that looks a bit like walnut brown by using uh, dragon black and just adding a tiny little bit of um, a lighter brown into it. It doesn't really look the same, but it, it'll be a very dark brown. Brown liner from Reaper is another great color for doing this. Um, brown liner is a lovely color. Not one of the ones that I'm prone to using a lot. I mean, a lot of people swear by it, think it's the best color ever. And it's a very useful color, but it's not one that I normally gravitate to. I quite like the walnut brown. But uh, I don't even think I've even got brown liner on the table. Let's see. Oh, no, I do. We'll use, there is, the, the people have spoken. Brown liner. It's going to be our color for the wash today, brown liner. All right, I'm going to keep going on this robe. A nice base coat on there. Not too worried about the direction of the brush strokes right now. I'm just getting this first color on. And usually I'd be telling you things like, be careful about overpainting and creating a texture by mistake by lifting paint out. I kind of think that on this dirty, beat up old guy, um, a little bit of extra texture wouldn't hurt. And you could almost give him a gritty, sandy texture and it would look, look like it's supposed to be there. I think he's the kind of the least refined looking guy we've had out of the 10. The 10, wow, just realized it's been 10 weeks we've done this. And uh, I know I said that at the start, but it didn't really sink in to, until I'm looking at the model and realizing this is the 10th mini we've done as one of these paint alongs. And uh, hopefully, many more to come. Like I was saying earlier, we're going to put out a new schedule soon. And. Uh, don't hesitate to contact me either through Twitch or through my website or through Facebook or whatever. If you've got a suggestion for a mini that you'd like to see painted during the paint alongs. Now I've already got, um, I'm, generally I'm looking for ones where there's a bone figure available as well as a, um, a metal one. And I don't care who the sculptor is, you know, we just, we like everybody, but, uh, what I, I've already decided we're going to do Almoran the Gold, the Paladin with the Flaming Sword. We'll do him. He's a fun one. And uh, there's a couple of wizards that I picked out that I didn't do in this series. I'll be ready to go for next time. A few like that is my plan. Okay, so now we're pretty much ready to go to do our wash of dark, dark brown over all that leathery stuff. So first, because I'm going to do skin tone while that's drying, I'm going to do a wash of burgundy wine over the skin tone before I come and do the brown liner. And that way it'll be dry by the time we're done the brown liner. So what have I done? I've got about is four or five times as much water as paint. Brush is loaded. And now I do want to be careful not to get this down on that, that robe. Again, mistakes are not too critical. What I want to do is go slowly and allow time for the paint to flow off the brush into the low spots on the skin. So do that on the oh, sorry, right off the screen. Do it on the top of his knuckle. Work my way around the back of the knuckle by that rope. Slowly down his forearm. And just kind of pull the paint down slowly to the bottom of his arm. And that'll add a little bit more depth of color on that arm. We'll do the same thing on the other one. Start by the fingertips. 
let the paint flow in and then slowly bring the brush back so that it flows off into all those low spots if I run out there's a useful trick you load up your brush with your paint but you need more wash you need to thin the paint a bit more just touch the tip of the brush to the water beside and now the brush is loaded up with a combination of paint and your uh, and water so we can use that as a way to make the wash right in the brush you don't have to use wash chemical products um, once you figure out how to manage the paint consistency and that's what we're aiming to practice today so slowly if you go quickly the paint kind of splatters everywhere you get water flowing everywhere if you go slowly you're kind of wiping the excess paint off at the same time as you're putting the paint in the low areas and that's the aim for this wash did i get everything no, i think i missed the top of his hand up there there we go and now we need to do his head same idea Want that to go into the eye sockets, down over his beard, all the way to the bottom of the beard. Now this is because there's so much water in this, as it dries, it's going to make lots of nasty coffee stain effects. But I don't really care because I'm going to go back over and highlight. I haven't done any highlighting yet. And where I missed, and it might have gone like onto the belts or whatever, I'm going to put the brown wash over all of that now. And I don't care about that being a mess either for the same reason. So there he is. Nicely prepared. Now I'm going to shake this brown liner like there's no tomorrow because I haven't used it very recently. See what it looks like. See if paint even comes out. If it's too, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Dried up. There we go. It's not too bad. Very very dark paint. I think I'm going to switch to a larger brush to do this part. I'm going to grab this great big number four here. Number four brush. Uh, guys, it'll hold more volume of paint. It's going to be easier to. I'll have to do less traveling back and forth from the from the palette. So there we go. That brown is so dark. There's dragon black and there's the brown. You can't really tell the difference between the two of them. Once we um, thin it out, you'll be able to tell the difference. And I'm going to just keep adding water into that. Thin it right out. Okay, so let's test do the thumbnail test. How thick is that? That's pretty good. That's about what I want. So I'll load it back up. And now I'm going to start at the top and I'm going to work my way down. So I'm going to start on the top of his shoulders up here. I'm going to slowly pull the brush over him, working my way down. But I'm doing this on the dark colors. I'm not going to do this on the color which is on his shirt okay if you get some paint on the shirt it's not the end of the day or not the uh, not the end end of the world i guess is what i was trying to say but this paint is very dark it'll be hard to uh, cover over so just be a little bit careful about that and i'm going to do the leather belts work my way down this uh bookcase book carrying case i'm going to put this all over that all over the rope. The rope gets this. Keep working my way down. Just slowly allow time for the paint to come off of the brush and into the uh, the low spots. To do the rope around his waist, just slowly going from left to right, underneath, and let that paint flow in there. Perfect. Do that little um, 
don't even know what we called it. The flask. Let the this go over the flask, even though it's not got a base coat on it. I'll put that over anyway. And then I'm going to do the rope under his arm, under there. And now there's this patch right in the middle of that shirt. And I want to let this go into the into the patch. Okay, make some nice dark shadows in there. There's another patch there. So I'm going to let this flow into the stitching of the patch. And there's another patch down here. And we'll let this flow into that stitching as well. Now, oh, there we go. We got a nice flood. See the flood happening along there? So I'm going to clean my brush out. There's my flood. And I'm going to put the tip of the brush in there. And I'm going to lift that flood right back out again. And then just reapply a few little dabs so I get the benefit that I was looking for of that shading but I didn't basically turn his robes black. Okay, now going up to the top of his left shoulder, same idea. Slowly go down along below the beard. And then we're going to do this rope. Both sides of the rope. Above his arm. paint flow off and then we're going to work our way down to this part of the robe this leather bag do both sides of that leather bag at the same time and then we don't want to forget this shoe down here this shoe gets this nice dark color it's a wash of that just let it flow in there and then there's another patch right there so we'll fill in that patch with this color as well Okay, and what else do we have to do on the front? We've got this big weapon, so we'll do the same thing. I'm going to start at the top and go down the length of that slowly, right over the metal bits we haven't painted yet. That's fine. Top to bottom, right over the little metal bit at the bottom. And then I'm going to slowly rotate him a little bit clockwise and do the same thing. Paint the top of it and then under his arm, pulling downwards slowly, allow time for the paint to flow off, fill in all the cracks. Okay, so now we're on the back. We already did the front of the top of the shoulder, so now we're going to start on the top of the shoulder and pull our way down from the top. Include that hood. Work our way down. So slowly over all that cloak he's wearing. I need to make some more. So we'll just get some paint, add more water. Before I load up the brush, make it a little bit extra wet, make some water in it, and then I keep going down across. So the little bookcase, straps down the back, belt pouches, both sides of those belt pouches. There's another one back here that we haven't done yet. Okay. Feel like I didn't get this zone in here off the shoulder, so I'm going to do that again. Pull the brush down across that. And then this arm over here, same idea. Start at the top of the shoulder. So I'm going to pull from the front to the back. Make sure we get this in everywhere. And then from the hood down across. So I think we've gotten the whole robe now. And now we need to do the barrel. The barrel. Scrape in the bottom of the barrel, as it were. So slowly we'll go across that wood color. Slowly work our way down across the whole barrel. And 
And as I said before, we're going to get lovely, horrible coffee stains out of this, which is what I want. No, it's not that I want the coffee stains. It's that the coffee stains are going to be covered up in the next step. And I was talking to some guys here in the studio today about slap chop speed painting. And that's all valid ways to paint. But what I'm doing here is not speed painting. We're practicing kind of fundamental um, layering painting. So our aim is not to go fast. Our aim is to learn to do the skills. So if we look at the front part of the cloak, there's all these holes in there. So I'm going to put this tip of this brush into each of those to make sure that the damage looks a little bit darker. And same thing on the back. There's quite a lot of these little spots. Did we do his boot? I don't remember if we did his boot yet or not. Doesn't matter. We'll do the boot again. It's not going to hurt it. Oh, I see what's happened. Everything has darkened up as it dried. And so it's hard to pick out where um, has been given the wash and what hasn't. And that's okay. That just means our wash is drying really dark. I really like it. Okay, there we go. All those little bits of robe are getting a little bit of extra dark color in them. And I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to do like a line all the way around the bottom of the robe. So where it's been dragging on the ground, it's going to get an extra dark line around the bottom, which will help it look really, really dirty. And it's okay if this kind of overlaps onto the gravel. We could, in fact, if we wanted to, why don't we do it? Let's just do this right over top of all the gravel as well. Paint the gravel with thick wash. Of brown liner and that'll help us get the base painted so thick wash brown liner or you could say we're painting it with a very thin coat of brown liner paint as opposed to putting a wash over it but we are doing a wash we're, we've got very thin paint and we're letting it go basically wherever it wants to there we go, and done. And look at those lovely coffee stains that we got on his belly. Awesome. Okay, so we're going to let that dry. Now, really make sure your brush is clean. That brown liner is a very pervasive dark paint. It is going to get everywhere. It'll flow to the brush, even when you think the brush is clean. So just go a couple of extra effort to clean it out so we don't have to fight with it later okay so we're gonna let all that dry and our the burgundy wine that we put over the skin is now dry so I'm going back to my smaller brush and I'm gonna go back to the skin tone so now I'm gonna start by we had already made a like a shadow color mix with this skin tone and burgundy wine so I'm just going to add a little bit of the skin, tan skin tone to that mix. And this will be my first layer uh, of highlighting. And I'm going to go, well, you saw the colors I put down there. We're going to lighten this quite a bit as we go. So now my brush stroke direction is going to matter a bit. As we marked out, there's my light direction on the vase right there. So as we're highlighting, we're going to try to make our brush strokes go in the general direction of... Uh, uh, of the light source. So we'll start on the forearm and we're looking for raised areas. So this guy is cold, kind of old and weather beaten. So we want to make sure we, we have skin that ends up looking fairly rough. Okay. So I'm not going to be super careful about making like smooth blends or anything by any stretch of the imagination. But what I do, don't want to do is completely cover over any previous layer. We want that to show through a little bit harshly to make them look kind of old and beat up. So I'm going to pick out like the raised veins and tendons that he's got on his hands and his arms. 
but I'm not going to completely cover over those previous two layers of, of paint. And it's going to look very, very rough as a result. But uh, that's going to pay off by making him look old and weather beaten. So that's what I want. Light direction there. So we'll do the tip of his thumb on the inside. And these hands, the brush strokes are going to go the other way. Create those highlights on his knuckles. Do an extra little dab of paint on the knuckles. He's got these burly, fat hands. So we'll give him a nice big highlight under his elbow, where I think I cut off part of his arm when I was removing mold lines. So there's his elbow. We're going to do the same thing. Brush stroke from the back to the front on the elbow. And you can see where the brown liner spread over onto the skin tone from the wash. That's one of the downsides of using a wash like that. It just kind of, the surface tension pulls it wherever it wants to go. And uh, if you're okay with that, it's not going to do any harm to your overall paint scheme. But it's just, it is a little bit harder to control than thicker paint. So, we can practice with it. Nice, beat up looking, harsh hands. I have to remember to do the foot as well. So I'm going to be going from the back to the front. lights over here. So the back of this hand is going to be basically the same level of highlight all around. I'm not sure if this is really like a noon lighting example, but. Uh, and we'll decide that later. Okay, so now we're going to do his foot. Get those toes down there. Oh, mind the toes are a little bit buried in the gravel. But I'm assuming that's okay for a guy who's carrying a giant barrel on his back. There we go. We got those toes on the side of his foot. Just shows there and there. Just a little bit. There we go. Okay, and now we're going to do his uh, face. So, light this direction means this side of the nose is going to be brighter. This side is going to be darker. So we'll try to keep our brush strokes going from the dark towards the light. And I'm just going to carefully pick out uh, the details that have been sculpted. This is sculpted by uh, Trey Manor, this one. And he does all kinds of Vikings and stuff like that. I really like them. But, uh, just kind of pick out the details without being, without joining them together. We don't want them to look smooth. We want them to look rough. We're not really joining any details together. So this side of his head is the shadow side. This is our first highlight. So it's going to be quite a dark color. We're going to go much lighter than this. So I'm going to start on the shadow side. Just going to go just going to roll of fat on the back of his neck. We're not going to completely cover over the burgundy wine and uh, tan skin mix. But we are going to make... We do need that highlight to go fairly far down. He's got a big smile on his face, so I'm assuming this is not early morning. I think this is the kind of guy who tends to wake up late in the day after a, an evening of, quote, helping the unfortunate. And uh, I think he... Uh, I would say this is going to be a late afternoon lighting in the dirty part of town. So he's going to get a nice uh, highlight. He might use some yellow in the highlights to really, that's what they call the golden hour, right? Introduce a bit of golden hour lighting. And, uh, but it's not super bright, but it would be warm light. 
I'm just doing a second coat of this same color to smooth out the skin on his bald head a little bit. The bald head where you are going to make that relatively smooth, I think. There we go. There he is. And we're going to keep going on the skin tone. So now that was a mixture still of the skin tone. So I'm going to just use the skin tone straight. And I do all those highlights again with the skin tone fairly quickly and really focusing on the areas facing towards the light. So anything which is a raised shape facing towards the light, I'm giving this same color again, another highlight again. Fairly quickly working my way through. So there's the thumb, the knuckles on the hands, the knuckles on the fingers. Do those so that I come from the left towards the light and then from the shadow back or out towards the top of the knuckle and get a nice highlight there. And do that again on the other hand. So that'd be the, the, the fleshy part of the thumb at the top. He's going to have little gross looking fingernails there. So we'll do a little bit of a highlight on them. And then the knuckles, the brush stroke is going to go from the tip of the finger out towards the knuckle. Most of the emphasis being on the round part of the knuckles on his fingers towards the light. And we'll do the same thing on his hands going the other way. And make sure you don't cover over those shadows between the fingers. We want to keep those. And then part of his hand by his, his thumb. There we go. And the back of his hand has got all these really cool like little round shapes where the tendons and the veins and everything are. The trays done a great job of sculpting them in. Any of the imperfections you can see on this is from me hacking away mold lines with a knife earlier today. Nothing to do with anything the sculptor did. There we go. Nice bright highlights facing towards the light. I'm going to clean my brush off, get that dry tip off the brush. Load up again. And we're going to do this foot. So down for the toes, there they are down there. And each of the tips of these toes. Almost like we're putting a toenail on them this time. There we go. And now we're back onto the face again. So the side of the face facing the light. So we're going to do bridge of the nose. Not between his eyes. Eyelid facing towards the light above his left eye. His cheek left side of his face right from our perspective the little cupid's bow needs a little bit of a highlight the big gummy lip needs a highlight his ear on that same side is just visible there under his mutton chop looking beard thing and now we're going to put a highlight on his head the highlight on his head the brush stroke goes from the back towards the light source pulling forward still quite a dark color so we're still going to go fairly far past the top of his head and want a little bit of a highlight on that roll of neck fat there we go like that and the ear just showing under his beard gets a little highlight and then what are we looking at now we've got the side of his face over here that knot in his cheek needs a highlight. The face always needs to be a little bit lighter than the, the surroundings because everybody kind of got to look at the face. We want that to be visible. The eyelid. It's a really interesting exp expression on his face. There we go. So now that stands out really well. Okay. I got to clean my brush and now we're going to start doing more highlighting. I'm going to switch to a smaller brush though, I think. Oh, that is a size zero that I was using. What have I got that's smaller? I'm use this Rosemary & Co. again. It seems to be my favorite brush these days. Okay. So no, I'm going to go back to that Da Vinci. Sorry for that. I'm going to keep working with that Da Vinci. 
All right, so now I'm going to add a little bit of this is Reaper Golden Blonde into that skin tone. And I like that it's a bit yellowy. Um, it's a lighter color. It's going to increase our values as we go. But uh, it's going to make him look leathery and old as it dries. So that's why we're adding skin, uh, the golden blonde in there. Okay, so now we're going to keep going. We'll go back to everything we've done before. Too many brushes. There we go. So on the hand, we're really only focused on the upper areas and raised shape. So that's those tendons on his arm, tendons on the back of his hand, thumb by the rope, tops of those knuckles. We don't need to do the knuckle on the bottom. We'll leave that one. Tops of those top three fingers. And then we'll do all the fingers on the side towards the light. Why? I don't know. I just feel like it. The thumb, fingernails, really give a nice strong highlight on those knuckles up there by the top of the, his club. And then the forearm and the back of that hand. We need a nice strong highlight to get the light directly. And I'm going to turn them upside down to make it easier for me to do my brush strokes coming forward. Toenails. Toes again. All right, and now we're going to do the face. So on the face, we need tip of his nose, nice big highlight, that little broken bump on his nose, a couple little bits in between his brows, eyelid on the side facing the light, nice round highlight on the cheek facing the light, that nostril gets its own highlight on the side facing the light, a little bit of a tendon that goes down his face into his beard. Keep its bow both sides, side of his lip, the orbit side of his eye needs a nice strong highlight, and then his ear in there, the top of his ear a highlight, tip of the ear on the other side, even though it's not getting the light directly, we want it to be visible, top of his cheek on the not lit side, up by the corner of his eye, we'll bring that up eyelid and now we're putting highlights across the top of his head got a little bit of a wrinkled brow there showing now so we'll just kind of break it up into three sections like that and then we're going to be painting by pulling forward creating a round highlight on the top of his head up here Oh, he's, his paint has got kind of coagulated and thick on me. So he's going to be rough looking. Very rough. Let's clean my brush out. Get a little bit more water in the brush. And I'm going to add Golden Blonde again. I'm going to do it again. Mostly, I think it's going to be not, yeah, about half tan skin half golden blonde this one so it's going to show up on the other ones but it's not going to be super bright and then we're after that we'll do a creamy ivory highlight that's probably going to be enough for the skin so small highlights just on the outside of round shapes on his hands just where the light would really catch them knuckles on the fingers His thumb is hitting, getting the light directly. Same with these hands, or the uh, the left hand on the club. Knuckles, same deal. His forearm here is getting the light directly, as well as the back of that hand. 
top of the thumb, that muscle in his forearm. These are all catching the light directly, so we'll give them fairly strong highlights on that side. There we go. And I'm going to put just the smallest touch of water into this mixture. Okay, and now I'm going to do, I guess it's going to sound like a broken record, the nose, the brow, the broken nose, the eyelid, corner of the orbit, top of the cheek, the cupid's bow, nostril, all those little details are still getting this highlight. Just each time the highlight is smaller. Top of the cheek. And what I'm doing is I'm building up quite a lot of volume and contrast with the shadow. So his craggy looking features are going to kind of... Um, but they're going to stand out. They'll be really visible. Top of the head. Okay, there we go. And then hmm. the lighting situation today is not ideal. Let's try that might be a little better. Let's try to kind of Keep the camera from putting a shadow across his face is what we need. I feel like that's a bit better. Okay. So the next thing I'm going to do... Yeah, I'm giving up on that brush now. I want something really small. Nice little brush. Where's that new Windsor & Newton? Let's play with that for a while. This is a size 0 Windsor & Newton for fun. So I'm going to grab some of that creamy ivory I put on the palette earlier and I add that into my previous mix along with a touch of water just a touch make it flow a little bit easier load up my brush make a nice point on it not overloaded okay and now I'm looking for uh, particular highlights to really emphasize. So, knuckles, knuckles on the fingers, want them to really show up. I'm going to do the knuckles on the fingers on the hand on the staff, and the knuckles on like his main knuckles. A little bit on those round shapes on the back of his hand. The forearm shapes facing the light. Tip of that elbow, just a touch to bring it up. Thumb. A little bit of that forearm muscle. There we go. That really brought it up. And then on his face now, nose, brow, nostril. Cupid's bow again. That craggy looking cheek. Eyelid orbit. Ear. They're kind of faking an ear. The ear is not cast very well on this particular model. And then top of the. Oops. Oh, look at that. Accidentally got orange all over the brush. Gotta be careful of that. I'm not very good at. Uh, I've noticed I've done that quite a lot lately. It's because my holding my brush in a low angle in the palette. I tend to do that. I need to be careful of that. Okay, there we go. Ready to go. And so I'm going to put a little highlight on the brow on the opposite side of his head. A little bit between his eyebrows. And then the nice round highlight. Top of his head facing the light. A 
There we go. Starting to show up really nicely. I'd say he's a good looking man, but he's not. Okay. I'm going to give that a minute to dry before I come in and do a little bit of additional detail work. I'm going to paint his beard now. So first thing I'm going to do on the beard, I'm going to take a little daub of burgundy wine and I'm going to make some stone gray into it. This is stone gray is going to be his beard color. Why am I mixing the burgundy wine into it? Just because I've already painted it this color. And now this is going to help me make it stand out without having to do a lot of blending. Okay, so it starts at the mud and chop on that side. And I'm just going to try to hit the raised shape of that mutton chop. Just a little bit above the ear. We're going to probably have to put a shadow around that ear in a moment. And then just like long kind of flowing brush strokes in a, I mean, it's a very small shape. So that we're, in addition to the texture that's sculpted, we're kind of adding our own hairy linear sort of texture. And we're going to do this about, I don't know, three or four colors worth of this to bring this highlight up. I'm going to want to go right up this side by his ear. I think we definitely need to add some shadows behind his ear. So I'm going to use straight burgundy wine for this. Get a little bit of that on my brush. And I am going to put some shadows behind his ear so his ears stand out better. So there's his left, uh, his right ear. I start fairly high up. And my brush stroke is going to go from the top of his ear down into the shadow. If I wanted to, I could draw the shadow on the inside of his ear as well. Make a funny little shape like his ear's got a, a little bit of um, topography in there. So we're going to fake that with some burgundy wine because it's not there in the sculpt. And then I'm going to do the same thing on the other ear, having practiced on the ear which is actually sculpted. And I'm going to start fairly high up and go down behind the ear. There, giving it some shape. Same thing, I'm going to do a little bit of a shadow with this on the inside of the ear. And just wiggle the brush in there a little bit. Give it the impression that there's a shape there. When people ask you, why do you spend so much money on Ninja and Newton brushes and all those brushes with a fine tip? That's why. That's really difficult stuff to do when you don't have a good a, a brush with a very fine tip on it. Other thing I've lost here is a definition of his mouth. So I'm going to start on the left side of his mouth and I'm going to basically paint his lower lip with his huge gaping mouth uh, from the top to the bottom. One brush stroke a couple of times to bring back the shadow, but I don't want to paint the upper lip too much. We want him to have that kind of dull expression. And then I'm also going to do this under his brow. So he's got these lovely eyebrows. So I'm going to put one line of this under the sculpted eyebrow. And that'll give the impression of a shadow to make his eyebrow stand out. I'll do that on the other side under the other eyebrow, which has got a little bit of a raised kind of quizzical look. There we go. Now his face is starting to look better. And his eye sockets get a little bit dark on mine, so I'm going to fill those eye sockets in again with the burgundy wine. Normally the wash that we did with the burgundy wine should make that quite dark. Didn't In this particular case, that's just the way that the eyes were sculpted. So I'm repainting the burgundy wine in the eye sockets manually, not in the wash to do it. Now this is where if you want to give his face like extra cragginess, you could find some of those features and paint a shadowy line on them, make them stand out more. Like he's got these little laugh line sort of things going on. We could put a little line along there. Make that stand out a bit. Side of his nose, we can make the nostril stand out better. 
There we go, we can do that on both sides. And we could give some nice imperfections to his face. Let's do that. I'll do some little crow's feet up in the corner of his eyes. Little crow's feet. Make him look old. And if we want to, we could also even take that um, burgundy wine, a little bit of a glaze of the burgundy wine. So very thin paint. And I'm going to run it like bags under his eyes. Make him look really, really tired and hung over. There's his bags under his eyes. A little bit of a glaze of the burgundy wine to make him look even more haggard than he did when we started. So yeah, he's been out he's been out talking to the people of the town. I have a feeling this guy's like a D and D character who uh, is like a prophet of the god of beer or something. Let's put some other little silliness for details on his face. There, now I'm starting to look pretty rugged. I like it. That's what I was looking for. How far are we? We're about halfway through our time. Does anybody have any questions? I'll just check the Twitch stream. Check everybody. All looks good. Okay. So we'll just carry on. How do they say it? Carry on as if we were normal. Okay. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to that creamy ivory and use straight creamy ivory. And I'm going to re-emphasize all the highlights on his face. Now, if this was a skin tone that I wanted to be really soft, I would glaze now. But I don't want it to look soft. I want it to look harsh. So I'm going to now... Particularly on his face, I'm going to just do the same thing I was just doing, messing around with the uh, burgundy wine, but I'm going to do it with the um, creamy ivory. And we're going to do that to really bring out some of these shapes. So tip of his nose, a broken nose, space between. Uh, we're going to highlight those crow's feet. Put a little bit of a highlight on his cheek by the crow's feet. This will really age him up quick. Highlight on the nostril. Cheek. Top of that ear that we defined. And a little round highlight of this on the top of his bald head. Make him look a little bit shiny. Also a little bit aged and not very nice. There we go. And I'm going to make his eyebrows a little bit bushy. There we go. Look at a nice face full of expression there. And that expression is, uh, too much beer. Okay. Um, I'm going to use Snow Shadow to give him... Um, the whites of his eyes, as it were. And I'm, usually I do a two-step eye, but today I feel like doing a little bit more of a, like a, a more complete eye. So I'm just going to paint the complete whites of his eyes with this blue color. And then I'm going to come back afterwards and I'll paint the irises at the end. I can't remember the last time I painted eyes like this. It's been a while. Anyway, so we're going to go, I'm going to use the brown liner for his eyes. How is that for a crazy plan? 
Going to mix it up a little bit, get it loaded up on this brush. Now you're going to be like, Jeff, what are you doing? You've just finished painting the face and now you're going to dab dark brown all over it and make a mess. Probably true. That's just the way it goes. I'm not fussed about it. So I'm going to go in with this lovely Winsor Newton brush and I'm going to put an iris right in the middle. And I'm not going to, well, I did completely cover the blue. That's not what I intended. Do the other eye. So now we need to come back and return some of the iris or the uh, the sclera that I painted over. Put a little bit of that in the little bit of water in that snow shadow to make this flow a little easier. We gotta do this quick because paint's drying out fast today. Corner of there he is. No, he looks a bit dopey. Well, I wanted him to look a bit dopey, but not that dopey. <coughs> it's been a uh, played two big games of Warhammer in the last two days, Age of Sigmar. So lots of talking and lots of exclaiming the results of die rolls. So I am feeling a little bit hoarse today. There we go. Bring the dark back in those eyes. Now we could go and do a little bit more of a uh, complicated eye. I don't really feel up to that. So I'm just going to do white reflection dots in each of those eyes. So there's my white paint. Now here's uh, where the flow improver can help. This is something I've been practicing with lately. I'm going to put a little tiny dot of flow improver there. And I'm going to get just a tiny touch of it in my brush. And I'm going to put that on the palette. And you can see the difference between the way that paint behaves. Let me zoom in on the palette for a second here. There we go. So this is the paint with the flow improver. And you can see how fast it moves on the palette versus the paint with no flow improver, which barely moves at all on the palette. So there's two things happening. One is that the surface tension is being changed by the flow improver. And the other one is that it dries more slowly. So what's that going to do for us? When we go and put this on the mini to do those tiny little white reflection dots, they're going to pull in on themselves and they're going to take longer to dry. So we're going to be able to make smaller white dots and the tip of our brush is not going to dry out nearly as fast, giving us more time to get lined up and make that perfect white dot. So I'll do a test one. Oh, go back to the proper camera view. There's a circus music. So I'll do a practice one on my hand. Is my paint still good? Nope, my paint's too dry. So clean that out. Clean that dry tip off the brush. Get everything lined up again. Reload with our white paint with a little bit of flow improver. Not too much. Do a test dot. Are we going to get white dots? Yes, we are. And now I'm going to do reflection dots in those eyes. Just a little tiny dot in the corner of each eye. There we go. And now, he's got quite the expression on the go. And I'm happy with that. I'm going to leave it like that. Okay. Oh, I can't leave it like that. i got to fix that part. I made a mistake. We'll fix it. My, uh, my white reflection dot goes right into my sclera. So I'm going to just bring back the outside edge of that iris. There we go. 
That's, I can, okay, stop messing around, Jeff. All right, so now we're going to go with the stone gray. Last time we used stone gray, we mixed in uh, burgundy wine. We're not doing that this time. And we're going to re-highlight all of this hair in the beard with this straight stone gray. Now, I want to keep all this shadow underneath. I don't want to cover that over. But again, strands. We're doing brush strokes that go from almost the very top of the beard to the bottom. But we're not completely covering over the shadow at the bottom. But we're creating a highlight that's kind of centered like that across the beard. Okay? So that the beard has a nice round looking volume. I want it to be lighter, close to the light source. Be close to the light source, I'm making that highlight bigger. There we go. Now I'm going to add creamy ivory to the stone gray, a little tiny bit of water. Keep everything flowing. A tiny bit of water, I mean tiny, like just a touch. Just to keep the paint from drying out. And we'll do it all again, but this time smaller smaller line of light across the beard and this does not need to be neat perfect because this guy i'm guaranteeing you spills beer down his chin every time he drinks a glop and he probably has half of his last lunch in his beer at the same time now we're going to add quite a bit of creamy ivory probably should be adding snow shadow because beer bristle tends to be a bit cold white. It's too late. Do the same thing with the creamy ivory. Slightly smaller lines, shorter lines. And they don't have to be quite so comprehensive, like we don't need to connect them all together. I mean, connect them left to right, right? Not from top to bottom. So his beard starts to look patchy gray as we work our way along. There we go. I'm happy with that. I'm going to leave that. Okay, clean off my brush, and now we're going to start doing, uh, what do we need to do next? I think we should do, uh, let's do some leather. Let's do this leather on the, all those belts and things. I can go back to a slightly bigger brush. Okay, so we have these leather colors that I picked up before. We had the russet brown. The russet brown is a lovely color for doing leather. And we did that dark color over top of it, uh, the brown liner. So I'm going to make a 50-50 mix of russet brown and orangey brown or harvest brown. So this is definitely going to be a lighter color and with a brighter orangey tone than the russet brown that had the black put over it. And now I'm going to go back and I'm just going to highlight and pick out the shapes of those leather belts. But I'm not completely covering over the dark color that is there. In fact, I really do not want to do that. But I don't have to make perfectly smooth highlights either, because the leather is not going to be perfectly smooth. So I'm just kind of wiggling the brush, doodling a little bit. Um, and just keeping in mind where my light direction is, which is that that way and making little highlights of this lighter brown on the leather and they can be patchy they don't have to be perfect for that to look like leather okay as that's drying we're going to go and do the same thing on this bookcase now this bookcase looks like it has like a, a braided leather so we're just going to do lines to match that pattern I'll do that along the sides there. Same thing on the other side. You know, maybe it's made of wicker. No, it's, it's definitely braided leather. So we're going to do lines one way. We're going to do lines the other way. And dots on the side where the leather strips overlap. Same thing down that side. Do, 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 do. If in doubt, make a sound effect. It will help. Do, 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 do. A whole bunch of lines. Same thing on the top, whole bunch of line, doop, doop, doop. 
dots along the little sculpted texture. There we go. We do the same thing. And I notice I'm not too concerned about the light direction. I'm aware of it, but it's not stopping me from highlighting anything. All these things in the shadows need these highlights as well. But around the front, on the light side, we're really going to amp up the highlights on the leather to make it really visible. So on the back side, it's kind of like doing a bit of an edge highlight slash dry brush effect. I'm putting the brush along the miniature very lightly so I don't hit the shadows. I just hit raised shapes. And that lets me put highlights on those shapes rather quickly just by kind of... Um, dabbing the brush across the surface on that very low angle, just catching the most raised areas. And that lets me get that leather effect pretty quick. There we go. Sound effects for the wind. There we go. Same thing on this belt pouch. We're going to do that fairly large highlight on top. And then we're going to go on the low angle and small highlights. It's got like a, a sewn um, line on it where basically like these are these are poorly made, handmade um, leather pouches. Going to get the belts on the back as well as on the front. So there's the belts on the back. There we go. So that's the first round of leather highlighting on those shapes. Now, we also need to highlight the leather cloak. And how do we want to make that look somewhat different? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that, um, that same russet brown color. I'm going to move some over, put it up by the skin tone. And instead of adding orange, I'm going to add tan skin tone to it. Well, that's going to give me a different looking color to highlight with. So that first color, okay, this first mix, I'll go and do something similar to what I just did on the other other, area, other, other leather areas, but I'm only going to use this color on this beat up looking cloak. So I'm catching all the raised areas on that. And again, not too concerned about light direction, but knowing what the light direction is, is going to help me decide um, which highlights to put, which raised areas to give this highlight to. And I'm just going to start on the left arm, hit the most raised areas. And it's again, it's beat up, it's weathered, so this is going to be patchy. Okay, his hood sticks up above, so I'm going to do a highlight on the hood. But careful, because that's a leather belt in there. Leather belt, hood. I want these to be two different colors. Same thing on the other side. There's the hood. This is the shadow side, so it's not going to need quite as much of a highlight. Um, but we still, still need the highlight on the shadow side as well. Just again, on the, the lit side, we're going to do a much, put much more effort in the um, in the lighter colors as we get there. But for now, we're just doing this first dull brown highlight on that leather. Nothing too complicated going on there. Now we need to do that on the back as well. And again, note where the leather belts are. We want this on the hood, but not on the belts. And my brush strokes now predominantly going from the shadow towards the light source. Going. Anywhere you see a little bit of damage, you want to look for the side of the damage away from the light. So like these torn bits here, there's a light is shining this way. So the light is going to catch the edge of that on the side away from the light. Like it's a little cup that's catching the light. The side, the edge towards the light is going to be, 
is less likely to have a little reflective edge. So that's, we're just not going to highlight that in the same way. See the same thing along here. That edge, but not that edge. This edge, not that edge. This edge. And then this little cup here, we'll highlight the bottom edge of it to, to bring out the leather damage. There we go. Looks logical. Okay. And while we're on it, we're going to add some of that leather brown to that color. Make an even lighter mix. And we're going to do all those highlights again, but we're going to do them not with like making lines. We're going to just do dabs. So like this is the highlight here. I'm just going to dab it along that. And that's to make it look like this leather is really quite beat up. So just dabs as opposed to smooth painted lines. And you can do this uh, on the earlier step as well. Now, some people might describe this as stippling. And you could definitely do this with a stippling technique, but I don't want it to look like a cloth fabric. So I'm not doing millions of tiny little dots or cross hatches. I'm just trying to make the highlights broken up so they look quite weathered. And this is going to help differentiate this leather from the, the leather belts as well, which are going to give it a little bit more of a smooth, kind of a shinier orange texture. All right, we'll work our way around this hood really focused on the front less than at the back same idea little dabs and dips and daubs there we go don't want to overdo this there okay and then around the back as well and the hood I'm just gonna say it again watch out for that Belt. We don't want this color on the belt. If you make a mistake, it's not the end of the world. But uh, this is to help make these two materials look different. My brush was drying out. Clean it out. Reload. And there's our leather texture there. So I'll just keep going with that. Very, very gently doing this, especially where I just cleaned my brush. Now there's a little bit more water in the brush than there was. So it's a little bit con more difficult, difficult to control the size of the dots that I'm making. Just have to be cognizant of that, be gentle making them so that we don't, what we don't want right now is a flood. There we go. That makes that show up pretty good. There he is. And what am I going to do now? Well, you guessed it. I'm going to do a straight leather brown highlight. Excuse me. Just really on the lit side. So, side of the hood, a few little dips and daubs. Crest of those ones on the shoulders, a few little dips and daubs. But not everywhere. Not on the dark side. This would be like for the most obvious tears and rents in that cloth okay we don't want that everywhere back of the hood same idea just a little bit focused really at the top of the figure up in here and these don't really absolutely have to line up with the ones you did last time um, but if you don't line them up sometimes it looks a bit weird but they don't have to be precisely on top of each other. These ones certainly are not. But now that shape is really, really visible. It's coming along nicely. Okay, so now we know what's the color and what's not. The ones that are going to be the orangey brown, we're going to go straight to that orange harvest brown. Remember, I said I want these to be smoother looking leather. So I'm going to give it all a highlight of this orangey brown with the brush strokes going towards the light for the most part. The leather can be a bit shiny, so the highlights don't have to be like perfectly towards the light because shiny objects, the, the highlights can be, um, the position changes depending on the perspective of the observer. But we're not too worried about that right now. We just want to do little orange highlights um, 
catching raised areas and it's going to be distinctly different color from the from the leather robe or leather hood cloaky thing really focusing on those towards making them irregular but not like jagged sort of things like the the other rope. So it's going to look smoother than that other rope. This is going on to the uh, leather book carrying case. Same idea, we got these dots with the knots of the, uh, the leather weave. So we're just going to put dots for that. Put dots down the side of the bookcase as well. Little dots. And as you're doing this, you might be thinking, this is too light colored. What's going to happen is the paint's going to darken. It's fairly transparent. And a lot of that is going to go away. So we're going to make that weave texture by making lines of highlights on like dots. So it'll bring out that texture. Now, if you are not highlighting the dots exactly, it doesn't matter. If there was no texture here at all, you could completely fake it just by putting dots. Okay, so it doesn't have to line up perfectly with the texture that's there. If you have the skill to make it line up, go for it. But if not, just fake it. It doesn't have to be perfect. I'll do some on this. Dunk, 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 dunk. Along there, and now we're going to do that same sort of crosshatch pattern of lines and dots as we did on the front, so that it looks like a woven other texture. I probably did that much faster than a lot of people can do it, but uh, if you're watching this on YouTube, just pause the video and do it on your own time. If you're painting along, well, sorry. I don't think there's too many people. Yeah, there we go. Okay, so same thing on the leather on the back on the belts. Smaller highlights because this is on the dark side. And on these belt pouches, the light's coming this way, so the top of this belt pouch, belt pouch is going to get the light just a little bit, but the rest of it is not. So we'll just catch the edge of that belt pouch like that, because it's getting light from that side, and we'll leave the rest. This one down here, it's going to get a little bit of light on this side, so we'll give it a little bit of highlighting, but it does not need to be highlighted all the way around in the back on the side which is not getting the light. Remember our light's coming this way, we decided it was late afternoon, so quite often the shadows are going to be very strong and blue on that side, uh, rather than um, like the bright kind of golden color we're going to end up with on the front of this guy. Okay, now I'm going to go to my next highlight color of the leather, and I do not need much paint on the brush, I'm going to switch to that smaller brush again I think. And do some very small highlights of this orange. Again, this orange is going to dry quite dark. You don't need a lot of highlighting, and don't worry if it looks like it's too bright. Just bear in mind that it's going to darken up. So on this part up here by the belt at the top, I'm going to do just the most raised areas. I can get a little wiggle of the brush to give me a bit of a highlight of this orange. go same thing on these raised areas right up up to the belt up of the shoulder a 
Look at a long dried piece of paint coming out the end of that brush. Let's get rid of that. Clean it up. Reload. Now that I've reloaded, having just cleaned out the brush, remember that the paint is going to flow more easily. So I just want to be a lot more gentle with this. Because I put too much pressure, I'm going to get big highlights and a lot of paint flow, which is not what I want. One of the ways to do this is to just kind of run your brush along and vary the pressure you put. And where you want more paint, you just go lightly. If you want to smear the paint away, you push a little bit harder and it'll change the look. It'll all look a little bit different. And that organic variety is one of the things you want in a leather texture. I just realized I'm speaking very quietly. Hopefully everybody can hear me. Certainly I can see the mic is picking it up, so I'm not worried that it's not going to show up on the video. It might be hard for people to hear me today. I'm sure people would have told me by now if they couldn't hear me. Okay, on the back, that little top corner is going to catch a light just a touch. On that pouch, going to catch the top of that strap just a little bit. Belt is going to get it. Of course, my paint is drying out now, so now I'm going to add a little bit of water to keep it flowing. Not too much, just that smallest, smallest hint. There we go. I feel like I want to do that highlight again. There, I did. Okay, there it is. On the front, on this side, that pouch, pouch is going to get a little bit more. More on those shapes. And I think there's a bit of leather holding this flask in place. So I'm going to put a little bit of leather color on that. All right, we're making very good progress on this guy now. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is going to be the robe. Here's a robe. And now I'm going to grab, so the leather brown was the color that we made the robe. So this is going to be pretty easy. I'm going to start adding creamy ivory into that color and make it progressively lighter. I don't want to do a big jump. I want to do a little bit at a time, but eventually it's just going to be, oh, I grabbed golden blonde by mistake. doesn't matter. Mix golden blonde in with it. It's going to have the same effect. So the robe is visible there. Don't completely cover over the shadow. And we want this robe to look quite battered, so it doesn't have to be beautiful smooth highlights we can in fact we could even put like a we know from this patching that there's a direction to the um, to the cloth fabric so we could actually even do like kind of hatch marking to create the, the like a linen cloth texture let's do that all the way through let's just keep hatch marking that to give it a really kind of clothy look and texture. Now, this doesn't really change how we highlight or where we put the highlights. It just changes the way that we do the brush strokes. And now that we know what that direction is gonna be, we keep doing it in that direction everywhere that we paint highlights on the cloth. And we make sure we do the hash marks in both directions on all the cloth. Lots of little hatch marks. Now, the highlights are going to be stronger on the raised areas of cloth where the light is catching like the, the edges of the threads. But where the highlights are brightest, kind of the glare of the light source is going to make the, that cloth texture less visible. So in our final highlights, we're going to stop making that hatch mark pattern so that it's more visible in the shadows than it is, <coughs> well, excuse me, just 
just going to keep going with the, a little bit more of this texture. Uh, down here as well. There we go. So I'm not sure how well that shows up in camera, but uh, there's definitely like a hatch marked texture on that cloth. I'm not really enjoying doing that with this particular brush, so I'm going to switch to a smaller brush. Ooh, you know, brush is really good for this. That lovely Raphael, not Raphael, what's this thing called? Rosemary & Co. So now I'm going to do the same thing, but I'm going to use straight golden blonde. I think this is going to look pretty radical. Like it's going to be um, quite a bright bunch of highlights. And uh, to make it look less bright, the, the hash mark pattern where it separates, like it, the, the darker color underneath is going to show through will make this highlight look less bright than it actually is. And that's what we're aiming for. So we'll do some very, very fine highlights. Come on, you can flow a little brush. There we go. But because the lines are separated, the highlight does not look as bright as it would if we had just done a straight highlight golden blonde over everything. Right, because the dark is showing through. Now, how do we blend this at the end? Well, this pattern of cross hatching will show through a glaze. It'll be subtle, but it'll show through the glaze. So that's all we do. We do the hash mark pattern consistently, and then uh, when we glaze, It'll show through. A few little lines this way. Notice I'm just focusing on kind of the main raised areas. Reach down to the shadow a short way and then pull the brush out. And that way when we're done, the hash mark pattern will show up really well. way some this way now in some of the previous paint longs we talked about um, you know going back to blend afterwards so how would you blend this well you go back uh, and you redo the hash marks with a darker color and that'll bring back your shadows if you've done too many hash marks and the shadows have been lost You just go back and redo them with a darker color, and they come back. I'll do that in one second, just for as an example. It's quite easy to get a dry tip on your brush doing this. And if you do, just stop. Take that dry tip of paint off gently with your thumbnail. Very gently scrape it away. Clean off your brush. And then go back and carry on. So now I'm going to bring I go back to a darker color. I'm going to go back and grab that uh, leather brown color. So I'll go back two steps. And if I was, in fact, I could even go a little bit dark, but a little touch of brown, oop, that's the wrong color, touch of brown liner in that. Even a little bit darker. So now I could go, say, on his belly here and do darker colored hash marks. So I'm still keeping the same texture. But I'm changing how light it appears. 
So if you feel like you went too light with your hash marks, just go and do them with a darker color in the same place over top, and you'll get your shadows back while keeping your texture. Simple as that. Nothing to it. Okay, I uh, want to go, I think, I'm going to go all the way up to creamy this time. Not going to do a huge amount of this, just going to do this mainly up on his belly. All right, like the lights this way, so it's not going to get to the back too much. It's really just going to be up in this lighter area up on his chest, or his belly, I should say. So I'm going to do my hatch marks up. I'll try to do it on the camera this time. Do those hatch marks right up there next to the light. Give us the impression of that highlight. That big round belly of his. There we go. So now I think what I'll do for my glaze, I think I'll just glaze it with leather brown again. It's not looking like the whitest dirty white robe, but it's uh, I'm kind of liking it. So I'm going to thin my leather brown. Now this is a little bit more of a challenge because we already did a wash of the um, uh, brown liner. So I don't want to let this flow in and cover the brown liner. So particularly like areas like that where the brown liner is already in there. I'm going to work my glaze down to those areas, but then pull it off to the side so that it does not really darken those areas too much. I'm going to go back and pull my glaze out. And you can see as it's drying that texture it changes the tint, but the texture still shows through there. And my glaze, so it's making it all look a little bit smoother the texture shows through, which is what I was looking for. How we do it on time? Well, pretty good, pretty good. Okay. There we go. Pretty happy with that, actually. i do a little bit more of this on the back. Same approach. Gently going over it with the leather brown, but not letting it fill in. Where the uh, brown liner was. Unless I see something like a stain from the brown liner that when I get, get rid of. Don't, not too worried about that because this guy's pretty dirty. Stains are not a problem. There we go. It's looking pretty good. I'm happy with that. Now, one thing we didn't do that we could do, we could do a little bit of kind of damage on the leather. So let's do a little bit of damage on the leather belts. I'm going to grab some golden blonde, mix it in with the lighter orange color that I used. And we're going to do a little bit of scuff damage. I think we're going to do that on the belts. So these belts, you can see where they're all kind of cut up. I'm just going to put little cuts and scratches in a few places on different angles, different spots on the belt. And that's going to help make it look weathered. Okay, let's do it up to the top as well. Tiny little scratches and marks, okay? Now, the piece de resistance on this is to go back and do it with the brown liner, the thin brown liner. Not straight brown liner, thin. And we're going to do that with a nice sharp tip brush, and we're going to clean most of it off the brush. So we're just making little tiny lines like that. Very, very thin lines, okay? And then we're going to look for those marks that we just put on there. Remember what I said a few minutes ago about the uh, the lower half of a scratch catching the light? So we look for our light direction. Let's assume that our light's coming down from above. 
So anywhere you put one of those marks, you can put like darker scratch marks above it with these tiny, tiny little lines with the brown liner. And it's going to make those look like cuts and gouges that are catching the light. Okay, and then the damage just shows up a bit better. These are tiny, tiny lines, okay, like nothing lines. And they should go all higgledy-piggledy, all different directions, but be related to the damage you did earlier. And that's going to make that leather texture look really, really good. Okay, that's enough of that. We got our off-white dirty robe. Uh, what do we need to do? We need to do the rope. So let's do, let's grab golden blonde and we'll mix the golden blonde with, uh, we had this leather color we did earlier. Let's mix some golden blonde into that. And this is going to be our first highlight on the rope. Let's give that a little bit more water, keep it flowing. So on the rope, we just, this is a bit like doing the, um, the hash mark texture. We want to just catch the tops of each knot in the rope. So I'll do this one on his belt. This is the easiest one. So I'm looking for the light is this way. So from the light direction, just going to come in and touch each knot and link of the rope where the light would catch this light colored material. And it doesn't have to be perfectly regular because the rope's not perfectly regular. It's a natural material, a hemp rope or something like that, pretty beat up. But by coming in from the light direction, just doing little dabs and dips on the tip, you're going to get a nicer, um, it's going to help um, reemphasize the light direction, keep the light direction in mind. Just do a little touch on each of those shapes. Same thing on the rope up here on his, is there a rope on the back? Not really, that's visible. Oh, there's ropes on the keg. We'll do that in a minute. And then the rope around, oh, under his arm. That's where the other rope is, down there. Dunk, 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 dunk. Just a little tiny bit down there. And then this rope on his chest. This one. Come in from the light direction again. And just put a daub of paint on the sculpt, sculpted shapes. And that's because it's a very matte colored material. If it was shiny, we could just make a line because the glare in the reflection is going to hide that not texture. But this old hemp rope is not going to be shiny. And I'm going to go straight golden blonde and do the same thing again, but not everywhere. Like these knots underneath here are not in the direct light, so they're not going to get straight golden blonde. But these ones up here, they are. So I'm just going to do those ones again. Facing the light direction. And we're going to do the ones down, not the inner strand, but the outer strand. We'll do those outside of those ones with the golden blonde. Again, this is to really emphasize our light direction, and that's going to help with that. Okay, same thing on the rope up here. It's going to catch the light quite directly. So, little highlights up there but bigger highlights where we come out from the shadow towards the light source, make them pretty big. Okay, and that's helping to illuminate. Okay. There we go. Now, the ones on the thing on his back. We're gonna do those at the end, I think, if we have time. Because we're gonna do the wood texture first. So we already did this um, green ochre wood texture or as our base wood color and then we put that darker color over it so we're going to come back and paint the ochre again to bring back the the look of the wood but what I'm going to do is just paint lines where there's wood texture I'm just going to paint lines it doesn't matter if it matches the sculpted wood texture but I'm Painting lines parallel to the wood texture on the side that the light is coming towards the mini. 
not everywhere, just what that's going to do is it's going to help to um, make the wood grain more obvious. And if you have, like me, accidentally cut away some of the wood texture, um, instead of just having nothing there, you're going to fake it with paint. Okay, we're going to fake it with a little bit of lines of this green ochre color. There we go. And we'll do that on the base on the bottom as well. And you're going to inevitably hit those little um, studs on the club. So we're not worried about that, but try not to fill in the shadows that were created by putting the brown liner on there earlier. Let's try to keep those. And when we go back to paint the metal, right, that'll... Uh, we'll, the metal will fix any mistakes we made right now with the uh, green ochre. Okay. Now, golden blonde, my favorite, gets mixed into the green ochre. And this is going to give it like a, a natural, warm, yellowy color, much like natural wood. Okay. And we do the same thing again, but try to make smaller lines. And really focus on the side towards the light. And again, it does not matter if it doesn't match the sculpted texture. Because we want to have a texture that goes all the way from the bottom to the top here. Fairly consistently. Even if, like me, oops, you accidentally removed it when you were removing mold lines. Very gentle touch. There we go. And we do the same thing on the weapon. And again, we're trying to keep it facing towards the light, like the weapon is uh, reflecting the light a little bit. Here we go. So that's enough for that weapon to look like it's made of wood. Okay, good enough. Maybe a little bit of a few dots at the top. There we go. That's where that edge might catch a bit of light. Okay, so that's all good. He's looking pretty cool now. I like him. So now let's rotate him around and look at this barrel on his back. So the barrel on his back is the same green ochre color. So we're going to do that exact same thing again. On the top of the barrel, we're going to paint the little slats there. Can we get an angle on that? Those. Okay. Same way, little lines. Now these bits around the outside are barrel staves, I think they're called. So we need to paint those as well. And I'm, this is gonna do all of the, uh, all the way around that, okay? And when we go to do the highlighting at the next stage, We'll keep that focused where the light might actually be able to either hit the barrel directly or reflect off of it. And we'll do this down below as well. Now this is like a kind of sawn log texture. Ignore that. Make the lines vertically. Because you're going to have multiple interacting textures there. There we go. Do it around the bottom as well. Just a bit around the bottom, not too much is necessary. Now on the back of this, not much light is going to hit that. So go to our golden blonde mixture that we made for the, the, the weapon. Grab that. The light coming this way, okay, um, let's see, where's the angle? There's our angle. There's the light coming this way. So it's just going to get the top of the barrel at the back. Okay, it's not going to get the whole barrel, just right at the back where it passes by his, his hood. So it's going to catch out here a little bit. We'll just do some lines. 
that. Now, how do we make wood look really good? There's a couple of different ways. One is you can, um, oh, I forgot to do that rope. Let's do that rope very quickly. Uh, what should we use for the rope? Um, I'm going to put some leather brown into that mixture I already made. Darken it down a little bit. There we go. And that's what we'll use for the rope on the back. The rope on the back does not need a very strong highlight. It just needs that texture to show up a little bit. And just on the side closest to the light, not everywhere. On this corner, we might get a bit of light bounce or whatever just to catch the texture. Just, just a touch. Does not need much. There we go. That's enough. That's enough for the back. Okay. Nowhere near as much as we did on the front. There we go. And then, what's the last few things we need to do on this guy? We'd still got to do a little bit of metallic. Uh, oh, I was going to do some fancy stuff with wood. Okay, so this is not kind of beginner materials, but um, always useful to have some of the basic ink colors available to you. So, like, uh, well, I'm, particularly for wood, I like transparent raw sienna. So this is Liquitex transparent raw sienna. And... I'm going to put a little bit of this ink on my palette, just a little dot. I don't need much, more than enough. And this is really good, like, for doing, like, emphasizing yellow of any kind. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a very thin glaze of that. And I'm going to put that over the wood. And that's going to give it a sort of a warmer, yellowy, polished wood look. So I'll do at the top on that handle where he's been grabbing it that's going to make it kind of shiny and then go from the top down towards this metal bit and as it dries it's going to turn a little bit yellower you don't want to get this on uh, any of the cloth or anything like that nearby because it really it, it's going to dry a little bit shiny we want to save this for on the wood I'm going to do that on the bit at the bottom as well. There we go. Oh, I know what we're going to do with this weapon. Uh, no, I was going to say we could make the weapon look all rusty and beat up, but let's not. Let's just make it metallic. Okay, so there's that done. And we could do the same thing on the barrel. Give it that same sort of a, a natural shininess and that little bit of warmth that the... Uh, Sienna will give it. Okay. Gives it that little bit of a warm, woody look. Just realize that we haven't highlighted the pages of the book. Let's grab a little bit of the creamy ivory and just a little bit right in there. We'll just. Now don't do the one which is like. That's the lid, right? I'm going to go in from the lid. Oh, no, I'm wrong. That's a book, too, right there. Just a little bit of that on those pages in there. And if you made a mess like I did, you can just clean it up with a little bit of your leathery orange color. And it'll be like it never happened. Doom, 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 doom. There, gone. And now the book pages stand out pretty well. Okay. Uh, what other silliness can we do? Oh, making leathers look different. So let's use a little bit of transparent burnt umber. Liquitex transparent burnt umber. Love these Liquitex inks. Just need the tiniest touch. Let's see if I can get it open. There we go. Usually when I do that process, I end up covered in ink. If you go on my Facebook page, you can see lots of pictures of ink spills usually ink all over me all right so now what we're gonna do we're gonna grab that so this is gonna make a really dark dark ready brown okay I'll put a little bit of my finger so you can see what it looks like dark red brown so when I thin this and make a glaze out of it it's gonna turn uh, 
any leather over, I put it over a redder color. And that's what I want to do. So I'm going to take one of those straps on the... Um, so here's what I'm working with. Okay, just a thin, thin color. And I'm going to make put this as a glaze over one of the straps. So I'm going to do it over this strap, not this one. Okay, so the one that goes up over his left shoulder, right from our perspective. I'm going to glaze this over that. And it's going to subtly change the look of that leather, making it a bit more red. Okay. And as it dries, it's going to darken up as usual. And I'm going to do these belt pouches, that same color. Now that belt comes up over his shoulder, so we'll do that there as well. There we go. And now we've got a different color going on between those two sets of leather belts. The one going this way is going to be a distinctly different color from the other one. Okay, so that's enough on that. Uh, what other silliness can we get into here? I guess we could do the metallics now. I'm just going to grab a basic metallic color. It doesn't really matter what it is. Uh, in fact, I don't even know what it's going to be. I don't even know what metallics I've got on the table here. Uh, it looks like hone steel. Is our winner for today? I think that's Hone Steel. Yes, Hone Steel is going to be our metallic. And then we're going to rust it. So our Hone Steel. Oh yeah, we got lots of time. Okay, Hone Steel, put that in the wet palette. The wet palette does not really like metallic paints, but we're only going to have it in there for a few seconds. Usually as soon as you start adding water to metallics, they kind of fall apart on you don't need very much so what I'm going to do I'm using a synthetic brush for this and I'm going to get those metallic bits so the bits of metal on that um, clubber I'm going to get one coat of this it doesn't have to be perfect because I'm going to rust it to bits I have camera yeah there we go do that and up there Okay, we're going to put, uh, we're going to actually make a darker metal to do the bands on the the barrel. But while this is still kind of a lighter color, I'm going to do each of these dots of metal that are like the, the studs in the club. I'm going to do them. Yeah, this paint's starting to fall apart on me already. Okay. But I'm too lazy to get a dry palette, do all that stuff. Let's just work fairly quickly here. Paint our metal bits. There we go. That is enough on that. Now, I'm going to take some black, and I'm going to mix the hone steel with black. This is the dragon black. And where it is it's on my palette, it's going to get some uh, brown liner and it's inevitable. That's okay, I'm not worried about that. And then I'm going to use this to paint the metal straps on the barrels. So we'll start this way. It's only getting one coat. And be careful now because everything else around this is already painted. So a mistake now means going back and doing a lot of fixing. So we'll just go slowly, carefully. There we go, there's one, and we'll do the other one. Now why did I make that darker? It's because the barrel is mostly on the dark side of the mini, so I didn't want this metal to be too bright. And it also gives me some room to go to highlight the top of the barrel with a lighter metallic where that light would catch it. There we go, just like that. So there's the metal straps on the barrel. Um, if you wanted to, you could paint that flask metallic. In fact, let's do that. Let's make this a metallic flask. We'll give the stopper at the top, and the main part of it will be done in metal. 
Like it's a little silver or steel flask, something like that. Okay. Now, I just realized we didn't paint his shoe. You guys were supposed to remind me to paint the shoe the whole way through. Say la vista. Okay. There he is. Now, what do we need to do now? We're going to grab the black, and I'm going to make a black wash to go over that. Do that up here in the corner. I'm going to throw some of that ink in there for no reason at all other than to make it look interesting. And with this black wash, I'm going to cover over just the lighter metallics that I just did. So that, um, we'll do it over the little pot as well. The metal band there. Gonna cover that over. The reason I'm doing this is to dull the metallic. Okay, dull the metallic. And that lets me choose where I want it to be shiny. Okay, choose where I want it to be shiny, which is going to help increase contrast. And that's what the game is all about, right? So I'll be able to choose where it's shiniest by highlighting the metal with other metal colors. Always to my advantage. There we go. And there he is. All painted up. Change my mind. I'm going to do this on the barrel as well. Because being inconsistent is at least consistent. Consistently inconsistent. There we go. Dull that barrel down a bit. Then that's going to be dry very, very shortly. So I think that his little belt thing, I think that that might be his one possession that he takes good care of. So I'm going to get that shiny metal and I'm going to give it just a bit of a highlight on its edges. And my brush strokes are going to go towards my light source. So now his, his one shiny possession looks shiny. And that's enough for that. Oh, I was going to do the top of the back of this thing too, right? So there's where the light would catch it at the top. I'm just going to do a little edge highlight right on the top where the light would catch that. There we go. Now the shiny top of the barrel. But barrels, that metal is almost always rusted, pitted, beat up and gross looking. So I guess what that's what we're going to do. We're going to make it rusted, beaded, beat up, pitted, gross looking. So I'm going to start with my lightest orange here of my leather colors. And we're going to do more texturing. So with my nice, what is this I'm using here? Size 1 Windsor Newton. I'm going to put little tiny dots of light orange all over that metal. All over that metal. Now you're going to be asking, well, Jeff, why did you start with the light orange? Because quite often, where you've got like rusted pitting, the uh, the center is where the hole has been worn through, so you get a bit of a shadow there. And where the oxidization and all those things are happening is uh, on the edges of those holes, where the water's having the most effect. So that's where you're going to see the light orange uh, color of the rust. So I'm going to do that light orange first, and then I'm going to put dark orange dots in the middle of all these light orange dots. And it's like when we did the cloth texture, we're going to cover it over. We're going to cover over the light orange dots with dark orange dots. Where am I going to get the dark orange from? Well, we're going to use the same dark color we used for the leather dark brown color, and then we're going to do even more dots with the darkest of browns that we've got available to us right now, which is the brown liner already on the palette. Do lots of little dots of that. There we go. Lots of little dots. And you can see how, like, once you get a feel for how much pressure to put, it does not take long to do this. And uh, you get a really nice looking effect. Now, lots of people these days are making 
rust effect uh, paints and rust effect glazes and oil washes and all this stuff. And they're lovely, but um, you don't necessarily need them to get a realistic looking rust effect. The thing that gives you the realistic looking rust effect in a lot of cases is going to be your brush control and your ability to make tiny, tiny, tiny little dots. Ooh, we're going to do it with burgundy wine instead of with the brown liner. That always looks good. Okay, so here's my dried now orange dots. They're barely visible, but it's definitely giving it a rusty texture. And now we're just going to put little tiny dots of darker brown in the middle of it. Now, if you have too much water on your brush, this is going to be very difficult to control. You need the paint to be relatively dried out for this to work well. So straight out of the bottle, let it sit for a few minutes. That's going to work really well. I don't know if you can see this, but this part of my palette's almost dry. Uh, it's just off the camera. It's right over there. Uh, right there. This paint is almost dry. So it's perfect for making little dabs and dashes and dots of dirty, rusty brown. And it covers a lot of the orange that I did, but it gives the impression of that texture that you get when things are rusty. Well, that's looking pretty rusty there now. I like it. And I'm going to do the same thing on the barrel. Do, 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 do. It's easier to make dots if you make noises, so I encourage it. Do, 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 do. What you may find is that you actually start to make a regular pattern of dots, which is not what we want. Rust it does not work that way. Um, you're going to get less rust, less rust in the areas where it's handled frequently, and skin oil protects the metal a little bit, or it just rubs off the rust and it polishes the metal a little bit. Where it doesn't get handled a lot, and where water pools is where you're going to get rust, or where it's damaged, you're going to get rust. So those are the things to look for. And I don't think this guy uses his mace very often. I think he mostly uses it as like something to lean on when he's drunk. So we can put lots of little rusty dots on these studs. There we go. And it's kind of rusty looking now. And what else can we do to enhance the look of this guy? Oh, I was going to do some burgundy wine dots because purple and corrosion and all that actually looks really good together. So what I'm going to do, actually, I'm going to make some very, very thin burgundy wine. And I'm going to make tiny dots with the thinned burgundy wine. And this is the opposite of what I just said for the, the rust dots. Because these dots then are going to dry in uh, water stain marks. Right? The sort of thing that we were trying to avoid earlier. So each of these tiny little uh, dots that I make, and the paint is very thin... Okay, when they dry, they're going to make water stains, coffee stain marks, that you'll be able to see the rust texture through. So tiny little dots of this purple, mostly in the area where the, sun, the, the light is not going to hit, gives it an interesting color variety, and as it dries, the rust texture will show through, and it enhances that, what your brain interprets as being rusty, with that extra little bit of a purple tinge. There we go. And quite often that rust is going to... Um, so I'm going to put some... It's going to, Water is going to move it. So I'm going to put a few little stains along little bits of the side of the, um, the barrel. And so like some water has been sitting on it. A little bit of rust has gotten onto the rope. And then I'm going to do few little drips and drabs of this purple color right down the middle of his shirt. Like he's been imbibing. Sorry, there we go. Just putting a few. Like he's been eating, uh, drinking a lot, and he's spilled a lot of greasy, gooey food on his shirt. There he is. Okay, not very kind to him or to his reputation, but I don't think he cares at this point. He's a happy, drunken old fella. There we go. Let's call that guy done. So the last thing to do 
So done in terms of painting details and all the silliness, but let's, um, we're going to paint the base. So we'll grab a brush. We're going to grab our dragon black and I'm going to paint the rim of his base black. Usually I'd paint the, the gravel first. I'll do that. I'll do that another time. I might, I haven't decided if I'm, no, it probably wouldn't be any grass around this guy. He's probably standing outside a tavern somewhere. So I could probably just dry brush it like light brown over the sand I put on the base. And then he would be essentially a painted dude. There, looking pretty good. Yeah, let's do that. Let's just put... Uh... Oh, I forgot to paint his foot still. All right, let's do the foot. You can see how fast this leather technique works. I'll do a quick highlight on the leather shoe. Dunk, 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 dunk. Grab the next orange brown. Get a little bit of the leather highlight on that. A little bit of the next orange, just, just a touch of it. There we go, and we can call that shoe kind of done. Oh, look, I put too much. What do we do when we put too much? Just wipe it off. Okay, just wipe it off. We'll be fine. The line of black back under that shoe, dunk, 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 like that. And now it looks appropriate. A little bit of a line of black around the toes. There we go. Done. Oh, I keep saying done and it's not. We got to do a little bit of work on his stones. A little bit on the... We're just going to take some of this nearly dried up gray stone color we were using on his beard earlier. My light's coming this way. So I'm going to start on that side and I'm just going to gently dab this lighter color onto the sand, which I have already done a glaze of brown liner on, or sorry, a wash of brown liner on. I'll just dab it on like that, just trying to catch the more raised out areas. Can get some on his legs too, because this guy's dirty. It's gonna that dusty color is gonna get all over him. Do a little bit more on the back. Light coming this way, so we're start on this side and just a little bit. Get some on the bottom of his robes too. Work our way around to the back. There we go. Almost done. We'll put some of that. Oh, let's put snow shadow into the gray. Because we highlight everything, right? If you looked back at something that you painted and you didn't highlight an area, you thought, oh, the wash is good enough to give me shading. I don't need to highlight that. Go back and highlight it. If you, you never finish an area on a wash, okay? Glaze, maybe, but never with a wash. Always go back and highlight on top of it. Oh, sorry, I'm off camera. There we go. So you can see I'm highlighting more towards the light direction with these little dabs and dots. Which is going to help reinforce the idea of what direction the light is going. I'm getting a little bit of that on his toes and everywhere else because this guy is dirty. I know I've said he's dirty a whole bunch of times, but he really is a filthy fella. There we go. Now that I can comfortably call a finished mini. All right, there he is. Pretty happy with that. Well, I hope that was uh, an interesting paint along. If you have any questions or if you're watching this on YouTube and you have questions, do not hesitate to reach out to me, ask questions. Now, I don't read YouTube comments on the videos or anything like that. So if you do want to ask a question, 
you you just you have to message me through Facebook or through uh, my website, or you can message me on the Discord and I will get back in touch with you. But I I don't spend a lot of time on YouTube comments. Okay, so I would probably miss it if you asked me a question there. And there he is, done. Done, and now I can go for dinner. What we might do in the next season is uh, do this level and then the next day maybe do a level up and take him, because this is a pretty good foundation for an advanced paint job. There's certain things that haven't been done like airbrushing in theme colors or really enhancing the lighting effects or backlighting or that kind of stuff. But maybe what we'll do next year is... Uh, take things to the next level as well. Not on the same day, but like do a class the next day or paint along the next day and take him up to the next level. Okay, there he is. He's done. If you made it this far, thanks for watching.